Uh, welcome to Dallas Online. It is again another economic session for economic subject. Again, this time we are going to uh, focus on the topic of subject matter. So our lesson, it is economics. We are going to focus on the topic. Our topic is subject matter. Uh, subject matter of economics. Our subtopic. Our subtopic. So as we said, this topic it has got many subparts or subtopics which have to be covered. Now in this time we are going to check one. I will check on the nature of economics and we will also check the economic economic laws. This is what we're going to deal with. There are so many things to be uh, to deal with in these parts uh, as sub, uh, as subtopics. But for this lesson, we are going to check on these two items. We will check the nature of economics, where there is also a divergence in some of the uh, to some of the economists. Then we will also check on the issue of economic laws. We will check what is economic laws, uh, types of economic laws and probably the application of economic laws. How do they uh, work? That is where we are going to center. So come with me. We start with the uh, nature, uh, nature of economics. Now in this part of the nature of economics, uh, most of economi economists, they are ex trying to explain the nature of economics in terms of uh, trying to explain whether we can group economics as a science subject or whether we can group economics as art subject. And if it is a science subject, does it operate really like other natural sciences? And if not, what are the reasons that is, not, that is making it not to be working as the other pure sciences? So it is this part of uh, nature of economics. We'll also check the issue of whether economics is working part as normative economics and part of a positive economics. So we are going to cover in this part. So in this part, having seen, uh, or we recall back from the class, uh, the nature of economics, some economists, they consider economics as a science subject. And they give their reasons as to why they consider economics as a science subject. So economics uh, is considered, is considered, as science, science subject, according to some economists. So they consider economics as a science subject. When we speak of science, science is a body of knowledge which is systematically analyzed or studied. That is science. So a science is a body of knowledge or we can say a discipline which is systematically studied or analyzed. This is a science. So these economists, they are also uh, arguing that uh, economics is a science because probably it has some features which science subject should have. So for them, they conclude that economics is a science subject. Now, why do they uh, say economics is a science subject? Now, reasons they use to, uh, to argue or to explain as to why economics is considered as a science. So we have some few reasons here which those, uh, those some economists they use to defend and say economics is a science subject. Number one, they say economics is a systematic study. Systematic uh, study. Remember in the introduction I said, uh, a science is a systematic study, is a body of knowledge which is systematically studied. So if we find that a subject, it is systematically studied, it is systematically analyzed, then we give, we'll be in the position to say this subject, it is a science subject. How do we say systematically? It means all science subjects or all science uh, disciplines, they involve some steps in, this, in, in, in studying the subject. For example, it should involve issues of identification, identification of uh, problems. That is one aspect in systematic study. So, if it is a science subject, 
it should involve identifying different problems in the uh, pro uh, procedures of uh, making solutions. Then at identifying these problems, it is also involving uh, data collection. That means there should be data collection. You identify those problems, maybe we say there is inflation in the economy. That is the problem. There is inflation in the economy. There is deflation in the economy. That is the problem. There is unemployment. It is a problem. We have identified. Then finally, uh, the second party, we are going to collect data. That is data collection. So in economics, we are also following these steps. We identify problems, as I said, maybe it is unemployment. It is maybe inflation. It is deflation or any other problem. Then after identifying that problem, we go to collect data. That means we visit the household, we visit the society to collect data because we want to uh, verify that uh, there is inflation in, this, in the economy. So that means it is a systematic study. After collecting data, we make data analysis. Data analysis. This is also done in economics. After we collect data, we have data analysis where those data, uh, they are analyzed, they are simplified, then they are maybe tabulized, or they, are, they, they can be presented in graph or in tables or in shadows, whatever. But that is analysis of data. So those data collected, they have to be analyzed systematically. Then after analyzing those data, that means we have the issue of uh, drawing a conclusion. Drawing conclusion. It means now after uh, collecting data, then you have data analysis. Probably you can present them, as we said, in different graphs, in tables, or in other presentation ways. Then finally, you draw conclusion. So these are some of the steps which all science disciplines, they have to focus. So because economics is considered as a science subject, it is also following these procedures. It is involving identification of the problem, involving data collection, involving data analysis, and finally it is drawing conclusion from those collected and the analyzed the data. So this is one of the reasons as to why we say economics is a science subject. The second reason as to why econo uh, these economics, they say economics is a science subject, it is that uh, economics, it, it has laws and uh, theories. It has laws and theories. It means see, all science disciplines, they have laws. For example, if you, you, you go in physics, there are so many laws guiding the subject. You wish maybe it is in chemistry, there are different laws, there are different theories guiding the subject. You go maybe likewise in biology, because they are science subject, they have laws which they are guiding those disciplines. Now, even in economics, we have laws. We have theories, which they are guiding our subject. So because we also involve laws and theories, then it is obvious we consider economics as science. Because like what is happening in physics, like what is happening in uh, chemistry, what is, what is happening in biology, it is also happening in economics. Now for that case, we can consider it as laws. Because these laws or theories, they are governing occurrence of different events in the, in the, in the discipline. For example, we have uh, maybe the laws of uh, demand and the supply. This is one of the laws which is in economics. Yeah. The law of uh, maybe uh, diminishing marginal utility. That is a law. So economics, it has many laws which they are governing and explaining the cause-effect relationship between different variables. So this is, this is also a reason that makes us to consider economics as a science subject because it is involving laws, it is also involving theories. Another reason as to why it is considered as a, uh, as a science, economic, it has scale of measurement. It has a scale of measurement. When you speak of scale of measurement, all science disciplines, they have scale of measurements. For example, if you go in mathematics, we go maybe in physics, in chemistry, there are scales of measurement. We have measurement like maybe those which they are measuring weight, those which they are measuring distance, those which they are measuring maybe height, and other measurements. So even in economics, we have scale of measurements. I said in, in pure science, like chemistry, physics, or other science, they have unique uh, measurements. I said, for example, the measurement for weight, measurement for height, measurement for distance, measurement for volume. Those are measure, scale of measurements. Now, even in economics, we have a scale of measurement. The scale of measurement in economics, it is the money. Money is the scale of measurement in economics. Why? Because all the value of all items, they are valued in terms of money. 
which it is given in terms of maybe a price, for example. That is, when we say the price of this item, it is this much. It means it is, it is indicating the measurement value of that item. So in economics, we have scale of measurement, which is money. And money, it is measuring these items or different commodities or different services by valuing them in form of price. So it means economics is a science because it is involving scale of measurement, where we use different measurement to measure these uh, items. Another reason as to why economics is regarded as a science uh, because it it can predict can predict uh, future events like what is happening in other uh, pure science subjects like in physics like in chemistry they can use the laws and the theories available to predict what will be happening in the future we all know those who are taking geography you know in geography, we can predict what will be happening in the future. For example, there are those people who are predict predicting, maybe in some years to come, these continents we have, they might multiply. Because they have seen some events going on, then they conclude that because there are faulting, fractures going on, then probably in some years to come in the future, these continents we have, there will no longer be seven continents. We may have eight continents or even ten continents because they see those events. So they are predicting. So even in economics, we can use the, the available informations, we can use the available laws and the theories to predict what will be happening in the future. For example, we can see the ongoing changes on price, the ongoing changes on employment, then we can predict what will be happening in the future in terms of employment, what will be happening in the future in terms of price. We can also predict what will be happening maybe in terms of population. We can see the present population, how does it increase in terms of population growth rate, then we can predict that in the future, the population will increase rapidly, it will cause these problems. So because it is giving us room of making predictions of what will be happening in the future, then this is also giving us a room to consider economics as a, a science subject because it is used to predict what will be happening in, in the future. This is one of the reasons as to why some of the economists, they, they consider economics as a, a science subject. This is one of the reason. Now, having seen uh, these, uh, some of these, uh, we can also see the other reason which is economics it has sorry it has experiments that means it conducts experiments how do we conduct experiment experiments in e economics are conducted to verify if the statement they are correct if it is true if we have a demand function if we have a demand law we can use that demand law and the demand function to make experiment whether the effect will be true. If we say an increase in price result to a fall in the quantity demanded, we can prove it either by graph, we can prove it either mathematically. So because we can make experiment to prove different events, like what, is they, what they are doing even in natural science, we can see in natural science they have laboratories, where they are going to conduct experiment to prove different events. So even in economics, we are conducting different experiments to, uh, to prove different events. As I said, if we say maybe if tax increases, it is going to reduce the consumption pattern of individuals, then we can prove it either mathematically or we can prove it using graph. So we consider economics as a science subject just because it is involving experiment which proves the occurrence of different events. This is, uh, now these are the, the reasons as to why some of the economists, they consider economics as a science uh, subject. Now let's try to see one of the competent questions there, question number two, uh, question number two, which is, though economics is argued as a science subject, it cannot work scientifically as other natural sciences work. That is, though economics is argued as science subject, it cannot work scientifically as other nature of science work. Comment the above statement using examples. So we have concluded that, based on these reasons we have seen, we have concluded that economics is a science because we've provided five reasons which are concluded, concluding that economics is a science. But that question is asking, even if economics is argued to be a science, 
But the operation of this subject, the working mechanism of this subject, it is not considering it as a pure, as a natural science, because it is not working as other natural science are working. Now, how can we comment on this statement that economic, said economics is a science? Then now it is not operating scientifically as other natural science. What do we mean? It means despite economics being science, there are some areas where it is missing to indicate is it as a pure science. It means there are some items which they are showing that economics is a science, but not pure science. Meaning that it is working as science, but not pure science. Now, what are the reasons? Now, it is very simple, because we have seen these reasons which they are defending economics to be a science, but you can use the same reasons to show that economics is not pure science. So we want to show that economics is not pure science in the following reasons. Now, one of the reasons, reasons, reasons here, what are the reasons that makes economics not to work as pure science, as other natural science? Now, one, the theories, uh, theories and laws used in economics are based on assumptions. Based on assumptions. So that is a weakness. It means we cannot consider economics as a pure science because the theories and the laws which they are explained in economics are not uh, pure. They are based on assumptions. When we say assumption means those laws, they cannot work unless those assumptions or those conditions, they operate. So if we have a law which cannot operate until a certain condition is fulfilled, then that is not a pure law. It is something which is explaining truism of items, but not a law. For example, when we say this is a law of demand, a eh? law of demand, which states maybe a citrus peribus. So the word is a citrus peribus. You call, we, call, we call back to class, we say the citrus peribus means other thing being constant. It means for this law to operate, there should be citrus peribus. This is the condition. So it is not a pure law because it is based on the condition. Meaning that other thing being constant, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. And the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. But it is working at, the, at a given condition. So for that case, if we go in pure sciences, like in physics, when we say this is the law of rotation, there are no conditions there which they guide the law. The law is stated uh, for rotation, uh, rotation, and it is working purely. But this one, it is working under given condition, which is stated as peribus. Meaning that when these things, they are not constant, the law is not functioning. For that case, this is not a pure science subject because the laws and the theories are based on assumption. The second reason, we said uh, economics has a scale of measurement, but the scale, scale of measurement is not static. Or can say not constant, so that it is well known. It means the scale of measurement in economics, because we said economics also has a scale of measurement, as we said. But this scale of measurement, we said, is money. It is not constant. The value of money changes from time to time. You can find today one t shilling maybe equals to this amount. Tomorrow it is going to change. They are going to change. So it is not constant. It is dynamic, changing from time to time. But we said for those pure sciences, their scale of measurement, they are not changing. If we say uh, one kilogram equals to uh, 1,000 grams, then that is constant, cannot change. When you say maybe one kilometer equals to uh, 100 meter, for example, that it cannot change because they are constant. But in economics, the scale of measurement is not constant. It is changing from time to time. You can find the value of items uh, today, they differ from those one tomorrow, and that they, they may be the day after tomorrow, and so far. So for that case, the scale of measurement in economics, which is money, is not constant. This is indicating that economics is not a pure science. This, the other reason, uh, experiments in economics, experiments, are not 
conducted conducted in in pure laboratories now we said one of the reasons of why economics is a science we said because it is conducting experiment but in pure science, experiments, they are conducted in laboratories, physical laboratories. You can go there, you can find it. They are testing the occurrence of different events in the laboratory. But in economics, we don't have pure laboratories which they are making these experiments. We said these experiments are based on either graph, graphically, uh, just doing graphs, or verifying that if demand uh, price increases, demand will fall by using maybe mathematical uh, functions, but not pure laboratory uh, experiments. Now, for that case, because we are not involving ourselves in uh, conducting a uh, laboratory experiment, then economics is not considered as a pure uh, science. That is one of uh, the reasons. And the last one, and the last one we say economics, economics deals with the human behavior. Another reason as to why economics is not considered as pure science, because this subject, it is dealing with the human behavior. Remember, human behavior is dynamic. There is no uniform way you can define human behavior. So if the discipline or the subject is dealing with human behavior, it is not easy to consider it as, it as science, because there is no uniformity. Because human behavior, they change from time to time. They are not static. They are dynamic. For that case, this subject is not a pure science, because it is dealing with the human behavior. Behaviors of individual consumers, individual producers, behavior of the government, and others. For that case, see, these behaviors are not uniform. They change from time to time. Then these, they are taking economics to be considered not as pure science. Now, these are the reasons as to why economics is considered as a, uh, not as a pure science. Now, basing in this expression I've made, uh, showing that economics is a science, then in working mechanism, this science can be studied in two approaches. That means we can explain science of economics in two approaches. That means science, economics is a science subject. We can study it in two approaches, as I said. The first approach, we study it as positive. As positive science or positive economics. That is the first part. Because we said economics is a science, now it can be studied in two approaches. The first approach it is we study or consider economics or we view economics as a positive science. What is a positive science? Now, a positive science is... It is a part of economics which is explaining how the economy is actually functioning. How the economy is fact, uh, actually functioning. It means uh, this one deals with the, how the economy actually functions. That is, it is dealing with the, how the economy is functioning. It means see, it is a branch of economics which is dealing with the facts. Eh? It deals with the facts or realities. You see? So in a positive sense, it is a branch or it is a part of economics which is explaining how the economy is operating how the economy actually is functioning. It is dealing with the fact. The fact. That means, see, this part, it is not dealing with the value of judgment. No. It deals with the facts. It means, see, with the positive economics, when people in the economy do not agree, they have to observe what does the facts tell us when there is disagreement. So it means, see, when there is any disagreement in the economy, that means we have to go to the fact. What the fact tell us? So it means in this part, we deal with the uh, reality of fact only. For example, when we say how the economy is actually operating, for example, when we say it uses a statement maybe like what, what is. It means what is, it is reflecting what is the fact of that item, the fact of that economy, the fact of that situation. What was, what was. This statement, they can be included in the positive statements that they are showing the reality, they are showing the facts or how the economy should actually function. This is when we speak of uh, 
positive economics. For example, when you say, one of the positive statements, e.g., uh, that example, when you say, the increase, the increase in price results to fall in quantity demanded. Those say that such a but but that, this is the fact. When price increases, we expect the demand to fall. So this is the reality. If we don't agree, we go to the fact. Either we use, as we said, maybe tables, we use maybe uh, diagrams. We present that when price increases, demand will fall. So this statement, it is a positive statement because it is indicating the reality. It is indicating the fact what will occur. Because when price increases, we expect demand to fall. So that is a positive statement. So this is uh, the first approach of studying economics. Now, if we view it in this way, the second part, you can view economics as normative economics. Normative Normative statement. Normative statement. As normative statement, here economics, it deals with the, how the economy should function. So here you can find a difference. In the first approach you said, it deals with the, how the economy is actually functioning. Here it is saying it is dealing with the how the economy should. It means it is like a suggestion. It is like something uh, to judge that how should it work. Not how it is working, how should it work. So this is a normative economy. It means this economy, it is observing or it is dealing with the people's moral or attitudes, expressions, and opinions. So it means it is considering opinions, expressions, attitudes of the people. How do they suggest the working mechanism of the economy? It means it is studying what is wrong or what is right, what is good or what is bad. So people that are suggesting on how the economy should operate by basing on opinion, suggestions, or attitudes of the people in the economy. Now for that case, we expect a statement in this economy to be like, for example, uh, what, what ought uh, to be so to be, that is, how should, should it be, that is, this is a normative statement, because they are basing on opinion, and under this uh, normative statement, when people they disagree, that there is a problem of disagreement, then they don't go to the fact, God is not dealing with the fact, they have to vote. Because they deal with the opinions, they deal with suggestions, they deal with the attitudes, that means they vote. They have to sit down and vote. Who says what and who says what. Then after voting, then they are going to make conclusions. So it means conclusions are drawn from voting when there is disagreement. While in the first part, as we said, it means conclusions are made after uh, uh, collecting facts. It means here we can make empirical evidence through research, then we can make conclusion. Here we can make through voting that people that have suggested this, that have suggested that, then make conclusion that these people they say, what about employment? They say, what about inflation? Then you conclude. So in normative statement, it is dealing with the opinion, suggestions, and expressions of different people in the economy. This is for the case of a normative and the positive uh, statement. Now, having seen these two approaches of studying economics, that is positive and normative economics, let's try to check one of the model questions, uh, which is a competent-based question on the issue of um, positive and normative statements. Now, we, 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 when you check in the screen, you find there is question number one. And the question number one is saying, the object of economic analysis is not merely to discover the truth, but also to assist in the solution of concrete problems. Comment on this statement. I repeat, the object of economic analysis is not merely to discover the truth, but also to assist in the solution of concrete problems. Now, to try to check this question, it is asking that in economic analysis, it is not only discovering truth. It means in economics, we are not only dealing with the finding facts. We are not only dealing with the finding the truth, which is happening in the economy, but we have also to consider the solution of those problems. It means when we deal with the discovering truth, it means we are in a positive 
economics. Because you said economics, uh, positive economics, it is a part of economics which is concerned with the, how actually the economy operates and it is dealing with the facts. Remember, those facts you said they are collected from empirical evidences of doing research. Now, after doing research, that means we discover the truth. So it means discovering truth. It is a part of positive economics. So it means you have to explain uh, what is positive economics and we relate on how uh, it discovers uh, truth. Because as we said, it is discovering truth by conducting research through making those empirical evidences. On the other part of that economic analysis, we have also to solve the problems which they are facing, the problem. That is to assist in the solution of concrete problems. It means to discover the truth of the economy, but also we have to solve the problems. Now, in normative economics, where we said it is dealing with the people's opinion, people's suggestions, people's expressions. It means from there, we can use those expressions. We can use how people they see, then we can, we can solve problems. So it means these questions demand you to explain both normative and positive statements as they are used in discovering truth, but also in solving different problems. This is for the case of that question number one. Now, having seen these uh, positive and uh, normative economics, now we move to the last subpart, which is the economic laws. Economic laws. Now, remember we said in the beginning, one of the evidence to prove that economics is a science, we said it has laws. Now, what is an economic law? Economic law, we say these, these are statements Statements of tendency which shows cause uh, cause effect relationship between economic variables. Those are economic laws. That economic laws are the statement of tendency. They are used to explain or to show the relationship or the cause-effect relationship between economic variables. It means the function of economic laws or economic theories, they want to show the cause-effect. Cause-effect means we have two variables. Let's say we have two variables. Uh, maybe we have uh, maybe a variable X and, and Y. When we say cause effect, these are two variables in the economy. Maybe it is inflation and unemployment. That is two variables, whatever. But now, economic laws are used to explain what causes what to happen. That means cause effect relation. If this one changes, what effect will occur in this one? That is two variables, they are relating to each other. Now, the economic laws will be explaining what will happen if this variable is going to change and this one. For example, we said uh, the law of demand. This is one of the law. Law of demand. It is showing the effect on the change on the price, the effect on demand. And we said when the price increases, demand falls. So it means there the variables is price. We had the price there. Then we had the quantity. So it means it is indicating what is the effect on the quantity demanded when the price changes. So we have a law there now which is explaining the cause-effect relation of these two variables. When the price change, what is the effect on quantity? This is the law of demand. But now, as we said, economic laws, they are a, tend a statement of tendency which they are showing cause-effect relationship between economic variables. And I said the economic variables may be price or quantities. We can also say economic laws, they are, they are governing uh, behaviors of individuals concerning the allocation of scarce resources. That means they govern the behavior of individuals. Individuals here can be consumers, can be producers. So they are governed by economic laws on how they can allocate their scarce resources to produce goods and services to satisfy human wants. So economic laws are governing those decisions of individuals, individual consumers, individual producers, on how they can produce goods or services to satisfy unlimited human wants. Then let's check the types now of economic laws, types of economic laws. So in terms of economic laws, we can uh, check four types of economic laws. They can operate in four types. One, we have the so-called pure 
or we say natural laws pure or natural laws what are these when we say a pure economic law it's that law which is operating purely from interaction of economic variables that means a law which develops or which explain the interaction of economic variables that is the uh, a pure or natural laws for example when we say the law of supply law of supply a law of supply it is explaining the interaction of economic variables the economic variables is the price and the quantity supplied these are economic variables so this law of supply it is trying to explain or to describe the interaction between the price and the quantity that's why the law states the higher the price the higher the quantity supplied and the lower the price the lower the quantity supplied so it is indicating the interaction of price and the quantity price and the quantity so it is developing purely from interaction of economic variables this is called the pure or natural laws the second one uh, we have the so called the uh, state state laws or they are called the laws of superstructure these are laws made by the government they are made made by the government why do government make these laws these laws are made by the government to govern different policies of the government when they want to meet the objectives so they they formulate some laws which they will help them in fulfilling the demand for what they need for example when we say there is a, a for example a law of taxation it means a law of taxation is not a pure or natural law because this law uh, these laws may be made by the government aiming to uh, to have effective collection of taxes aiming to have maximum collection of revenue or whatever so it is made by the government to assist the government in different decision these are called as state or superstructure laws then uh, laws number 3 we have the laws uh, which are called the specific specific laws these are the third category of economic laws these specific laws these are laws which they operate in a specific economic system or in a specific economic event that means they cannot operate in overall economy because they are not general but they are just specific for a certain system for example when we say a, a law law of profit maximization This is this is a specific law because this law it is operating only in that economy or in that system which is profit maximizing economy and we know profit maximizing economy means the capitalist economy or the pure capitalist economy it is where individuals their motive their objective is to maximize the profit so those laws which are governing profit maximization they are specific laws because they will only be operating in the part of uh, a capitalist economic system it means they cannot operate in a socialist economy in a socialist economy we have maybe the law of welfare maximization it means welfare maximization it can only exist in a socialist economy because in socialist economy the government the motto of the government is to maximize welfare of the society welfare of the majority now this can only operate in socialist economy or the so-called command economy it means it cannot operate in capitalist economy this is for the case of welfare maximization now the last type of economic law the last type of economic law we have the general laws general economic laws that is number four so law number four we say we have the general laws general laws these are opposite to uh, specific laws these general laws these are laws which operate in uh, in all economic system it means they operate operate in all economic systems these call them as general laws it means 
When they are in socialist economy, they operate. When they are in capitalist economy, they operate. When they are in mixed economy, they operate. They operate in all economic system. It means if you apply those laws in Tanzania, they operate. You, you apply them in maybe in Cuba, they operate. You apply them in USA, they operate. Because they are general laws. They cannot operate in one part. They operate in all economic system. For example, uh, the law of demand and the supply. The law of demand and supply. It means this law can operate in any economic system. In a pure capitalist economy can operate. In a socialist economy can operate. In a mixed economy can operate. So we consider it as general law because they can operate in all economic system. That is economic laws. Then now we can also go to check the nature, nature or we say characteristics characteristics of economic economic laws that is the nature or characteristics of economic laws that is the other part now some of the characteristics or features of economic laws they include the following number 1 they are they are hypothetical and conditional it means economic laws are conditional. What do we mean when we say conditional? Meaning that economic laws, they are basing on assumptions. It means the operation of economic laws, they are conditional. Meaning that they operate in uh, assumptions. That means without those assumptions, they cannot operate. That's why we said the law of demand is stating citeris peribus. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. And the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. Because it is explained at condition of city disperibus, but another thing they remain constant. It means out of those conditions, this law may not operate. So this is the first uh, feature. The second one, economic laws, they are, they are indicative. They are indicative. We say indicative because they are indicating what is going to happen. That is in reality. It means when we say this is a law of demand, it is actually indicating what will happen. What is going to happen? So economic laws are indicative in nature. This is one of the features of economic laws. Number, number three, economic laws, they are qualitative. Qualitative. What do we mean when we say qualitative? It means economic laws are not quantitative. They are qualitative. When you state economic laws, for example, you say, it is just stating when price changes, demand will change. But by how much, it's not explaining. So it is qualitative because it is not stating when price changes, by how much the quantity is going to change. So they are qualitative, they are not quantitative. So that is one of the feature. Number four, economic laws, we say they are, they are not exact because they, they deal with the human behavior. They, did, they are not exact because they did with the human behavior. And we said human behavior is not, uh, is not static, it is dynamic. So these laws, they are not exact because they are dealing with the human behavior. And the last nature or characteristics, we say these laws, they are, they are non Play, dic, predictable. Predictable. What do we mean? It means see, what they explain, it can happen or not. That is non predictable. They are not predictable. We cannot predict it. The economic laws can state this event, but the event may not necessarily occur. It may not occur. So uh, the event, uh, it, may, it may occur or not. This is for the case of economic laws. Now, these are some features of economic laws. But generally, these laws, economic laws, whether they are specific, they are those who said general, or they are pure. But economic laws are very important in economic life. They are very important because they are very useful in helping individuals to make different decisions, especially for consumers, for producers. They govern them to make different decisions. But also by the government, 
it is very useful in formulating different policies. Policies about taxes, policies about maybe welfare maximization, and the other policies of the government. They might be governed by the economic laws. So they are very useful in those ones. But also, economic laws are very useful in, in some areas in terms of predicting the future. It means you can use economic laws to explain or to predict what will be happening maybe after one year, what will be happening in the next month, what will be happening after 10 years. So we can use economic laws to predict, to make predictions about the future trend of the economy. But after observing the ongoing situations, then we can use economic laws to explain what will be happening in the future or in the near future. For example, maybe we can check the trend of population, the trend of unemployment, the trend of production, then you can predict what will be happening in the future in terms of population, in terms of unemployment, or in terms of production of the economy by using economic laws. So economic laws are generally very uh, useful. Now we go for a very short break, and once you come back, we'll read some comment and questions from some students, and you can send your comment or a question uh, to the number which is passing on your screen. Thank you, and come back after the short break. Yes, welcome again after the short break. Now we are going to read uh, comments and questions from some students from different parts of the country. Now we start uh, from Andongwise Mwakajoka from Bea. He is asking, hello sir, uh, we have a very interesting lesson because you have been facing problems in uh, performing some of the areas, especially economic laws and uh, the nature of economics. Thank you for intel uh, the interesting lesson. That is Mwakajoka from Bea. Then next comment is from Anna Kambona uh, from Moshi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. The lesson is interesting. We are very happy because we get some solutions from the areas where we made some difficulties. Thank you also for your comment. And the last comment is coming from Elizabeth John uh, from Lindy. Good afternoon, Sam. We are thankful for, uh, for the discussion. Indeed, it is very good and it is helping us stay blessed. Thank you also for your comment. And this is the last uh, comment. Thank you for listening. You have to keep on studying on your personal studies. Uh, pass in different past papers, books, and other areas so that you become competent enough to solve different questions. We meet you next lesson. Thank you.